Welcome to Beat Diabetes and another edition of our Books and Quotes series. And today we will continue to look at this book, Why We Get Sick by Benjamin Bickman. The subtitle is The Hidden Epidemic at the Root of Most Chronic Diseases and How to Fight It. A quite ambitious title and subtitle. Basically, why do we get sick? Well, most people would say, well, there's a lot of reasons for that, and uh, there are. But what Dr. Bickman is saying is that there is one central root boogeyman behind most of the chronic diseases. Now, I called him Dr. Bickman. He is not a medical doctor. He is, in his own words, a, uh, a, well, let's just look it up. Oh, he says, I'm a biomedical scientist, a biomedical scientist and professor. So he has a PhD connected to his name. It's proper to call him Dr. Bickman, if you like, but uh, not a medical doctor. However, he has become fascinated with the issue of insulin resistance. You might say he, along with uh, Dr. Jason Fung, who is a medical doctor, uh, they're kind of like the spokesmen for the issue of insulin resistance being behind so much of the sickness, disease, and of course, diabetes that is in our world. So uh, yes, uh, last time we did this series, uh, I didn't even get to his own words. I, I quoted from uh, Dr. Jason Fung's foreword to, in this book, but now we're going to get to Benjamin Bickman's uh, words himself. But we're not going to get hardly past the introduction uh, because... Uh, he kind of spills the beans and, and gives the heart of what he wants to say in the introduction. We will move on in other, uh, other sessions and talk some more about what he says later on in the book. Anyway, he starts out by saying we're sick. Uh, we're having uh, a rate of disease well beyond anything that ever occurred before in the history of our planet. And he talks about cancer. He talks about diabetes. He talks about Alzheimer's disease. Uh, heart attacks and heart disease of different kinds and strokes. Now, he's not suggesting that these haven't ever occurred before. or they? There always haven't been these things. There have. Uh, di diabetes, they were talking about diabetes thousands of years before, but not at the rate we're having now. And the same with heart attacks and so forth. The issue is not whether we have these things. We've always had them, probably always will. But the problem is we're having them at a much higher rate. Uh, they're just uh, multiplying, and you could use the word epidemic. They become epidemic in our world, and America kind of leads the way in this, but a lot of the other nations and other parts of the world are following suit and uh, desperately trying to catch up, which is not something you want to do. Uh, he has, as I said, become fascinated with the idea of insulin resistance, but he admits at the beginning in his introduction that there was a time where here he is a, what's the word? A biomedical scientist. <laughs> I'm having a hard time remembering that. Biomedical scientist. Uh, and yet he didn't even know the term. So he had his degrees and he had done his research in various aspects of sickness and disease and the human body. And he didn't even know anything about insulin resistance at all. But as he started doing an article, he started out kind of interested in obesity and some of the issues about obesity. And then he somehow got turned on to the idea of insulin resistance, began to read about it. Uh, but one of the things, one of the points he makes, in fact, the major point he makes is found early on in this book, in the introduction, where he says this, though they may seem unrelated, talking about cancer and heart disease and diabetes and so forth, they may seem unrelated. All these disorders and more do have one thing in common to varying degrees. Insulin resistance is causing the problem or making it worse. And he even goes on to suggest if you're an American adult, you've got like about an 85% chance that you are insulin resistant or you have insulin resistance. A lot of people wouldn't classify that as a disease, but it's not far from one because it leads to all kinds of medical problems. So he calls it the most common health disorder in the world, insulin resistance. And yet he goes on to say most people haven't even heard of it. And I think that's true. If you go up to 
somebody at your church or a neighbor and say, well, what do you think about insulin resistance? Do you ever worry that you might be insulin resistant? They'd be like, what? What do you mean insulin resistance? Uh, and of course, insulin resistance basically means your body cannot process insulin and go through the process of dealing with carbs and sugars in the normal fashion. It doesn't do very well. It may get the job done, but it may take twice as much, three times as much, five times as much insulin to do the job as it ought to. And that puts you awash in insulin. That means insulin is flooding your bloodstream constantly, 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 day and night. And that leads to a whole lot of problems. And the word that is used for this condition of insulin resistance, which leads to and, and brings about the flooding of your body with insulin, is hyperinsulinemia. Now, some people might say, yeah, but insulin is a good guy. Whenever you hear about diabetes, you hear about how the doctor will prescribe insulin. Apparently, they don't have enough insulin, so he prescribes insulin. So it must be a good guy. Well, not in excess. It's not a good guy. It goes over to, to the dark side. It becomes a very, very bad guy. Your body doesn't need five times as much insulin, although it may gamely try to produce it just to keep up with the, the high glucose. So it's kind of a catch-22. You have high glucose and not so much insulin, you're in trouble. But if you have high insulin and you get your glucose down by jamming insulin into your body constantly, that's not so good either. Well, let's look at another uh, statement he makes. He says, I began trying, talking about his own history, and he talks about how that he went through a process of doing research and finally got uh, fascinated by the idea, idea of insulin resistance. He said, I began trying to find any evidence of insulin resistance in other diseases besides diabetes he's talking about. He says, I learned it was present in almost every chronic disease, especially present in chronic conditions uh, in the chronic condition that stem from a, high, a diet high in processed and artificial foods, as you will see. So it kind of uh, gives a spoiler here, a diet high in processed and artificial foods. And of course, later he's going to talk about the carbohydrates. He says, this was something I never really appreciated, insulin resistance causing diseases other than diabetes. And yet I was considered an expert on insulin resistance. So even after he started studying insulin resistance, he just thought of it as a problem all by itself. Insulin resistance and diabetes. He thought, you know, that's it. Insulin resistant turns into diabetes. And then he began realizing you find it suspiciously present, high insulin, in people with cancer. Suspiciously present, high insulin in people with heart disease and so forth. And he's like, man, I'm finding it all over the place where things aren't going so well, where the ship is sinking physically uh, in, a, in our bodies. In other words, he says, I'm finding high insulin. So it, it's just all over the place. And he makes the statement, you've probably got it. If you're an American adult, even if you're from other parts of the world, it's very likely as an adult you have it. And he gives a list of uh, eight, que eight uh, different questions. And he says, if you can answer yes to any one of these, you probably got it. And of course, he's suggesting that if you answer yes to two or three or four of them, <laughs> almost for sure you've got it. So here they are real quick. Do you have more fat around your belly than you would like? If you do, probably insulin resistant. Number two, do you have high blood pressure? Number three, do you have a family history of heart disease? Do you have high levels of blood triglycerides? Very dangerous condition when you have high triglycerides. Do you retain water easily? Do you have patches of darker colored skin or little bumps of skin, skin tags at your neck, armpits, or other areas? The seventh question, do you have a family member with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes? And the last question, do you have polycystic ovarian syndrome for women? Or if, if a man, do you have erectile dysfunction? Again, answer yes to any one of those. You're probably insulin resistant. Answer yes to two, three, four of them. Uh, almost certainly you are. So it gives you a key. Now, in this little short review, and we're going to go into this book some more in, in future editions, probably at least two more. 
But I, I didn't want to leave you at that because that's kind of a depressing thought to say, well, you've got insulin resistance. Sorry, bad luck on you. Uh, but he does go on to talk about how it affects us. And then the, the, the most glorious part of the book, <laughs> the most positive side is how you can either prevent it or reverse it. So let me just give you a hint. Let's just skip way over to toward the, batter, uh, the, the latter part of the book. He says, once we appreciate that too much insulin is a main driver of insulin resistance, let me rewind that and say it again, too much insulin, what Dr. Fung likes to call hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin is a main driver of insulin resistance. He says, once you get that, the chain of events suggesting a solution is too obvious. Eating fewer carbohydrates equals reduced blood glucose equals reduced blood insulin equals improved insulin sensitivity are the reversal of insulin resistance. So he comes in <laughs> on the side of don't eat so many carbs and sugars. The very thing that I've been saying and so many other doctors on YouTube, I'm not a doctor, but so many doctors are saying that and uh, nutritionists as well. Now, yeah, you can find doctors and nutritionists that say the opposite. They say, don't worry about the sugar. Don't worry about the carbs. Just cut the fat way down. And then once you've cut it way down, cut it down some more. And then once you've got it down there, cut it down some more. But he's not of that camp. And this guy is a very smart guy and has done a lot of research and he's got a lot of studies to back up what he says. And basically he's saying the things that some of us have found out through the ju judicious use of a glucose meter, that high glucose is bad. And you know, one thing about uh, myself, uh, when I first started trying to lower my glucose, I never even thought about high insulin. Nobody was talking about it in those days. That was back in 2002. So I never thought, well, I need to get my insulin down. But here's the thing, if you're doing it by diet, not by meds or not by injecting insulin, but if you're trying to get your glucose down by diet, you are automatically lowering insulin in your bloodstream. You're doing the very thing he says we got to do. Just by, and Some people criticize me. They say, well, you don't talk about insulin every program and you focus on A1C or you focus on uh, high glucose or you focus on using your meter to make sure your numbers are going down. But if you're doing it by diet, you are lowering insulin, my friend. You are lowering insulin. So that's the thing. And I didn't know it at the time, so I was ignorant of the fact I was lowering my insulin. But now I know. <laughs> I realize that by making sure my glucose stayed low and eating low carb, my insulin levels were going down as well. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.